church family and those of you in our community or wherever you may be joining us from tonight. We're thankful for you to take time out and take a pause in the middle of what is, I'm sure is a busy week for some of us and many of us and take pause all, uh, time out to pause and reflect on God's Word together. And you know, for some of you tonight, you may be uh, out of town already traveling with friends or being with family, I should say, and um, and getting ready for the Christmas holiday coming up on Friday and Christmas Eve tomorrow and mindful of that, some just may be getting ready for family to come in. All sorts of things this week as we indeed focus on this wonderful holiday season, this time of the year that so many, of course, are focusing in on the birth of Jesus and we are thankful for that as we have touched on. During this time of the year, I, I, I think about a song that we sang during my time as campus ministry a good bit. It seemed to be a song uh, a little more popular in those years. I think it's still sung from time to time now. Our college students and youth people may know it. The song, in fact, was, was we were playing during the countdown as we were counting down, getting ready for the video here tonight. The song, Lord, to, Lord I lift your name on high. And in the course of that song, if you notice, pay attention to it. It talks about the fact that he talked about Jesus. He came from heaven to earth to show the way. And then from the earth to the cross is the life he gave. From the grave, cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, it goes on to say, Lord, I lift your name on high. And in our readings this past week, or this week I should say, and as we're going through our readings, you notice we're going through the prophet of Zechariah. And Zechariah is a prophet that was written about the same time as Haggai. Haggai focused on uh, the, the Jews and the Israelites rebuilding the temple once they return back from exile. And much of Zechariah is focused on that, but it's written to be a period in words of encouragement to those exiles. And Zechariah, as you'll notice as you read through this week, is really kind of a tough book to read through. There's visions in it. There's um, language in it that's similar to Revelation, to be honest with you, which we also are reading through right now, and also similar to the visions we see in Daniel. And it's given hope to the Israelites and Jews and some of those things fulfilled during that time then, but also in the, this language, in this book, and in this prophecy, do we see, we see a couple of different prophecies that all commentators and scholars agree have messianic overtones to them, that, uh, the prophecy about the Messiah. And one of those is in Ze chapter 3 of Zechariah. Now we see this prophecy that is given about the one to come, the hope of the Messiah, Jesus. And I think in this passage, as we read through it, it reminded me of that song that we played earlier, that song that he came from heaven to earth, and the words go along with that. 
And so it says, I'm going to start in verse 9. It says, Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, you and your friends who sit before you, for they are men who are a sign. Behold, I will bring my servant the branch. For behold, on the stone that I have set before Joshua, on a single stone with seven eyes, I will engrave its inscription, declares the Lord of hosts. And I will remove the iniquity of this land in a single day. In that day, declares the Lord of hosts, every one of you will invite his neighbor to come under his vine and under his fig tree. I get some, again, some language, some images that are used here that in some ways are kind of tough to digest and work our way through. But in this particular passage, it's, again, a passage that obviously speaks to the Messiah and gives it one of, of hope. And the aspect of remembering and celebrating and seeing Jesus coming to earth. Well, how do we know this is about the Messiah? Well, at the end of verse 8, as you read, he says, Behold, I will bring my servant the branch. And this idea of the word branch is used several times in the Old Testament to highlight this aspect of, of referring to Jesus. One of those is Isaiah chapter 11 in verse 1. And of course, Isaiah has so many prophecies regarding Jesus. But in verse 1 it says, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And so we see that this term branch is used several times to talk about the Messiah, the one coming from David, the one we know to be Jesus Christ, who has promised to come from the seed of David. And this imagery that is, that is used, this aspect of the branch, is one of bearing fruit and, and fruitfulness, finding life. Jesus himself really <clears throat> refers to it in, in, in the Gospel of John when he talks about the vine and the branches and he says he is the vine and that's kind of the same imagery that's referred back here to this particular aspect of it. And of course the growth that comes off that vine, the fruit that is bared and born from that vine. And so we see that he came from heaven to earth. He indeed brings us life. He brings us fruitfulness. But also in this passage, we see in talking about Jesus, the Messiah, to one to come, we see it talking about his perfect knowledge. Verse 9, For behold on the stone that I have set before Joshua, on a single stone with seven eyes, I will engrave its inscription, declares the Lord of hosts. The seven eyes, the eyes that is used here in this imagery, most commentators believe the eyes talk about wisdom and knowledge that comes into that. And the seven, most of us are familiar with the fact that seven in Scripture, a lot of times makes reference to completeness or perfect. God created the earth, for instance, in seven days, a complete creation. And there's several other references we could talk to about the seven and referencing completeness and perfection. And so we see that he's prophesying about the Messiah coming and having complete, perfect knowledge, complete, perfect wisdom. Back in that, in that prophecy in Isaiah chapter 11, we read from verse 1 just a moment ago. But in verse 2, it says that a branch from his root shall bear fruit at the end of verse 1. Verse 2 says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Jesus himself, as he does, did come from heaven to earth, he did indeed come to show the way. Not only was he the way, and we understand he is the way, the truth, and the life, he came to show the way, and He came to bear His perfect knowledge, His perfect wisdom on what the way is for us to be able to follow. And we can be thankful for that. We have it in His Word, of course, and things that He said and things that He taught, that He did come to show the way. 
And so we see in this passage, I'm talking about the aspect of the, fruit of the fruitfulness of Jesus that he brings, the knowledge that he has, the perfect wisdom that he has, and then also the aspect of the forgiveness that he brings as well. Again, in verse, in verse 9, I'll remove the iniquity of this land in a single day. We understand that part of the reason, in fact, the reason you might say for Jesus coming to earth to be the Messiah, to be the Savior, the one that was sent to earth to reconcile all men to God, in which we have forgiveness. He came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, our debt to pay. And we can all be thankful as we think about, and so many people remember Jesus coming to earth, and we've talked about that a couple of different times, but obviously we always remember that Jesus came to earth indeed to show the way and to be the way, but also to give us the way to forgiveness, to have our debts paid. He paid a debt we cannot pay. And in the end of Zechariah chapter 3, in this little vision, if you will, that's given and talked about in Zechariah, something for the Israelites to have and find great hope in, it mentions the peace we find in Jesus Christ. He says, in that day, declares the Lord of hosts, every one of you will invite his neighbor to come under his vine and under his fig tree. The phrase, under his vine and under his fig tree, was known to be a, a Hebrew phrase, a Hebrew um, term that was used that would be well known to the Jews there. And it had the aspect of peace. It had the aspect of prosperity. And, and it was a promise to them, much like it's a promise to us, that we know that indeed we find peace in Jesus. And Jesus brings us peace between us and God. And Jesus helps bring us peace in our own lives as well. And because of that, it's something we want to share. We invite our neighbors to come in and sit under the fig tree, if you will. Sit under the vine, as vine as it mentions to them. And we do lift his name on high. We lift it on high because we praise him. We also lift it on high because we want to share this good news with others around us. And we should, should want to share it, of course, with our family. We should want to share it with our friends and our co-workers and our neighbors because of what the Messiah came and did for us and the hope indeed that he gives us. And so this passage is wonderful prophecy, one of so many prophecies that is given to us about Jesus throughout the Old Testament, the promise of the great Messiah to come, what the Jews looked for, what they longed for, and of course, when Jesus came to earth, what we now can look back on and be thankful for, that Jesus did come to earth. And in coming to earth, he brings fruitfulness, brings life. He shows us the way. He gives us a path and a way in which our sins and iniquities can be forgiven. And because of that, we can have great peace in our life. And hopefully, we, we do and we should want to share that with others. So just some thoughts for us tonight as we do gather here in the middle of this week and middle of uh, this week of Christmas. And for many of you, your work week is now over and you can look forward to hopefully a couple of days of and enjoying time with family, whether in a physical way or in a virtual way, and hope you're able to the rest of this week. And I just encourage you and, and challenge you, as I did even in the lesson this past Sunday, to make sure we do all pause at some point in the next couple of days and, be, and remind ourselves and remember and be thankful for Jesus' sacrifice in coming to earth, living the perfect life that he lived, and then ultimately, of course, his death on the cross. And obviously, praise God for his resurrection and know that he is alive today. So just thoughts for us tonight as we approach this season and holiday of Christmas. We do hope you have a, a blessed rest of the week. We hope you have a blessed day together Friday or whenever it is you may be getting together and 
celebrating with your family, and again, in a physical way, in a virtual way, during this, this time, which is very understandable as we all continue to deal with this pandemic. We do invite you to join us for our, our worship this Sunday morning. We look forward to worshiping together. We will have worship here assembling at the building and continue to do so in a, in a safe and a social distance way. I invite you to join us for that this Sunday. Or if you deem it best to worship from home, we will have a worship video available this Sunday morning. It will begin streaming and premiering at 9.45 a.m. And then the worship itself will start at 10 a.m. And of course, if there's anything we can do for you, we continue to say that and mean that. Please reach out to us, connect with us. I know a number of people love to be willing to help, uh, especially during these winter months and time of the year. Again, Merry Christmas to everyone. We hope you have a blessed day on Friday and a blessed time with your family. Let's close tonight in prayer. Father, we, we stop and remember that your son coming to earth. We are so thankful for that. And we're thankful for the life he gives. We're thankful for his wisdom and knowledge that he shares, the way that he gives us for us to follow. We're obviously so thankful for our sins being forgiven through his blood. And Father, help us always find security and peace in him and with him and be willing to invite and share the good news with others. We're so thankful for your love that you're willing to send your son Jesus to earth. And Father, at a time that's still very dark in our nation, and our world right now, as we continue to deal with this pandemic, it's nice to be able to take some time this week to reflect on your love, reflect on your son, and be reminded that our, that our true hope is found through Jesus and Jesus alone. And for that, we're thankful. Father, we don't want to be insensitive this week to those that are hurting. We know this is a difficult time for people in, in normal years, but even especially this year, this can be a very difficult time for people. People who have lost loved ones and facing their first Christmas without loved ones in their life. To those who are dealing with sickness in loved ones or those close to them, those who may be dealing with loneliness and even during this year of deeming it best to stay apart, which we understand, but the loneliness that goes along with that. Father, there are so many situations that people, I'm sure, are hurting during this time, and we don't want to be insensitive to that. And we pray for your comfort on them. We pray for you to wrap your arms around them, and they too can find great comfort and joy just in the gift of your Son, Jesus. We continue to lift those who are hurting physically due to the pandemic or other sickness. And we continue to lift our health care workers, our first responders, those on the front lines to you. We are thankful for this vaccine starting to go around. We pray that continues to be effective and help us begin to restore a sense of normalcy to our lives. I know we all long for that as we look and uh, point toward the new year as well. But Father, help us always remember that no matter what, what the circumstances are, no matter what is going on, they all, we always should make sure that we keep our eyes focused on your son Jesus and then go to him to be able to find our peace, our comfort, our strength to get through each day. And we pray all this in your son's name. Amen.